Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Bright Talk and our very first session in our new Ask the Expert series. Ask the Expert is a new weekly series where you get to ask leading experts your questions. Each week, we're going to focus on a different subject from ITSM like today and then on to Bitcoin and cybersecurity in the coming weeks. Under the attachment section on the screen, um, you can see the upcoming sessions and register to attend them. Before we dive into our ITSM and DevOps 101 session, I'll just introduce myself and tell you how to get involved with today's webinar. So, my name is Harriet Jameson, and I joined Bright Talk in November 2017, so I'm relatively new. Um, I'm the content manager for the ITSM and application development communities. And my background is in content and marketing with a specific focus on IT, smart cities, open payments, transport, and app development. Um, I'm based in London, the UK now, but I recently returned after three years working in Toronto. I'm really excited to have today's guest, Daniel Breston, with us today. Um, he's here to answer all of your questions, and this session is really for you um, to ask any questions that you want about DevOps and ITSM, so please do get involved. Um, you can get involved by asking questions in the questions box on the right, and if you have any feedback um, or want to rate the session, please do so that we can uh, figure out what went well and what we can do even better next time. So without further ado, let's move on to today's session. So we're kicking off our Ask the Expert series with a focus on IT, SM, and DevOps, and we have Daniel with us. Daniel is an unprecedented leader in the ITSM and Dev DevOps field, and I'm thrilled to have him here today um, to answer all of your questions. So Daniel, I'm just going to pass the reins quickly over to you, and if you could give us um, an introduction to yourself and um, your work and your background, that would be great. Thank you very much, Harriet, and thank you for uh, asking me to be part of this series, which uh, looking at all the different sessions that to have uh, upcoming uh, look, look very exciting. Thank you. I've been in IT for, uh, well, let's just say many years. Uh, I started off my career in the great state of Texas and working for various financial services institutions, became an IT director until 2004 when I became a consultant and then for the next decade was practicing IT service management, IT operations, the data center, application support management, et cetera, um, basically continuing my career. Uh, I'm now a principal consultant for Virtual Clarity, who helps organizations look at technology and how technology can best be uh, used within them to help them do better, faster, safer things for their internal staff and also their customers. So we do a lot of automation work, we do target operating model work and process improvements, et cetera. Uh, and that's, that's me, really. Uh, oh, and as you mentioned, I'm a well-known speaker. I, I speak at a lot of different events for the IT service management forums or Fusion or Lean IT, and, and a proud member of the British Computer Society. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, now you've told us a bit about yourself. Could you give us a brief introduction to ITSM and DevOps? Sure. <clears throat> um, contrary to popular belief, uh, we used to be able to do IT before uh, any of the big frameworks started okay. to rear, rear their heads. Yeah. Uh, we didn't necessarily do them well, but we did do them. Okay. And over time, as we wanted to improve, uh, we started to take advantage of frameworks that came out, like ITIL, which I'm sure everybody knows, COBIT. And these kept improving, if you will, so agile, all the software development methodologies came about. And as IT service management and agile methodologies uh, continued to improve and lean and IT started to get introduced, the DevOps movement uh, came into play. And DevOps is about collaboration, it's about in in increasing flexibility, it's, in it's about in Improving the way that people use technology and benefit te from technology in your organization because you're able to introduce software, be it things that the IT operations or service management people uh, provide, 
or software that your development or vendors provide in a better, faster, safer way. So it's, I'd like to say it's the development of an idea until that idea is fully operational based on technology and how technology can help you. To do that, you have to have collaboration. You have to have communication. You have to have shared values. You have to have metrics that make sense to everybody. And you have to be able to look at your automation in such a way that you're not afraid to apply it across teams and let those teams work together to do what they need to do quickly, as quickly as possible, but also with high quality. Okay. And that's my introduction to DevOps and service management. Thank you. That was a very uh, neat, succinct introduction. Thank you. So I'm going to start the questions part of the session with the top five ITSM and DevOps questions that Daniel, you always get asked. Um, after that, I will go through the audience questions. We already have some coming in, so thank you very much. Um, if you haven't asked any yet, please do so in the questions box. Um, so we're going to kick off with this question. Is ITSM and ITIL compatible or even still relevant with DevOps? Daniel, what do you say when people ask you this question? Well, I like looking at, you know, if you draw three circles, like a Venn diagram, and you look at, say, okay, we need to have some governance about what we're doing, and we need to be able to have some, some good practices that everyone recognizes are good practices. So let's call that the ITSM circle. Okay. But we want to be able to do this in a way that allows people to collaborate and allows those processes to be as flexible as possible and allow software or technology to be delivered to customers as quickly as possible. So let's call that agile. And we want to do this further in a way that we can continuously improve such that we can show the value and the benefits to our internal staff and more importantly, to, our, to the customers that benefit from our organization. So let's call that lead. In those three circles, the intersection is DevOps. If you take away IT service management, you get quick stuff, but you don't necessarily get it in a way that keeps you safe and keeps you governed, and you don't want chaos. So ITSM is the break that's going to help you on your car go faster. It's going to ask you the quest, you know, the right type of questions about what you're getting ready to do, but not stop you from doing it. And, and so I don't think that DevOps can actually occur, and many of the leading speakers in the DevOps movement agree with this. I don't actually think that DevOps can occur to the best of its ability without IT service management practices and processes. Okay. Right. Um, secondly, how do these ITSM processes that you mentioned enable DevOps practices like continuous integration and deployment? Well, w DevOps is about deploying and releasing things as quickly and safely as possible. IT service management started the processes of change, release, test, and deploy. The question then is, is how do you automate that such that that cycle, that whole value chain of, I want something, let me have it now, please. How, how does that get automated such that the time to deliver something, be it a fix, be it an incident resolution, be it a request fulfillment, be it a brand new piece of software or application, that, that's the way these two things intermix. So DevOps is going to look at the basic practices of IT service management and go, I can automate that. We don't need a change approval board at this particular point because we can automate and govern those approval processes. We, we don't need to have a manual task to, to say, yes, go ahead and release that because our testing has showed us we've passed everything, so that can go ahead and be released and deployed. So that's the, inter that's the interaction between IT service management processes and DevOps. And if you need to roll back, which IT service management, you know, would say that would be a disaster recovery action, let's say, mm. well, DevOps can even help enable that. So all the different processes of IT service management flow together. 
Okay, great. And moving on to leadership, when it comes to leadership, I know that you're asked this question a lot. And so how, how does leadership interaction change with DevOps versus um, leadership interaction with ITSM? So when I was an IT service management manager, director, yeah. I was more focused on how were our processes working and were we following the practices that we were supposed to have standardized. The change was that I had a team of individuals that helped articulate that and create Visio diagrams and create policy documents and run meetings. In DevOps, you go and say, you know what? The best people to actually look at this, these all these different processes, how are we going to fix things? How are we going to change things? How are we going to deliver things? So the people that are going to do the work. So if I get the right people across teams in my organization, and that might even be external auditors, it might be uh, vendors it, all involved, then I, now I've got the right people looking at, the, at, at a good way of working that a high level process might provide the guidance for, but they're now going to do the practices and processes against that. And I think that's where leaders of today need to let go of the reins. Yeah. Okay. And more become a coach, become a facilitator, become a removal uh, of obstacles, uh, stop asking people to create red, amber, green reports, except that red is a good color, and then help them get over the red. So, okay. so it's a complete change of, you know, what are the key metrics? How do I help my people know every single day that they had a good day? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, in terms of, so we talked about the relationship with leaders and the team just then, what about the relationship between the specific tools of ITSM and how these tools support DevOps? Uh, like, what are they and how do they do this? Okay, so let's, let's remember that DevOps is a technology uh, framework and IT and technology love tools. Yeah. So the, the question then is, is, do we rely on one tool which is the way that I may have worked in my past, or do we rely on a suite of tools that allow me to do the best thing that I possibly can in that particular part of my value stream? So there might be great tools in capturing requirements, but that same tool, while it could do deployment, isn't the best tool possible. So. I need to have a great tool to capture requirements. I need to have a great tool to visualize how those requirements are being tested. And I need to have another tool that now allows me to deploy it if it passes the test. And those tools need to be able to work together and need to be able to show people where, where things are, where they're getting stuck. And I think that's, you know, the big framework change now of I'm not going to necessarily be well, I might be single vendor, but I'm, ne I'm, not, I'm no longer going to be single tool focused. And I think leaders need to start thinking about the fact that, you know, it's okay to have a bunch of tools. They, they may even rely on open source tools to be able to do what they need to do uh, for their customers and internal staff. Okay, thank you. Um, just move on to our last um, question in the FAQ section. Um, do we have to completely reorganize our ITSM teams and create DevOps teams? What do you think about no. that? No. I think there's not a one-size-fits-all. There's not a DevOps organization template. I think you need to think about the way that you want to work, and I think you need to think about the way that your organization uses and benefits from technology. And then looking at the way that you fix things, the way that you change things, the way that you value work, the way that you budget, the way that you, you know, do stuff. Now, 
let the organization, if it needs to, morph, transition into a different way of working, that definitely needs to occur. So you need, you need to look at roles and skills, but you don't necessarily need to now create a new top-down matrix organization. You, you, you need to start thinking about products and, and the teams associated with that and, and not be so worried about the organization itself. I mean, one of the most challenging authors on the DevOps uh, speaking circuit is Mark Schwartz. And he's written a book that, that even questions the value of having an IT organization. Should the IT organization now just become, you know, embedded into the business as, as technology tools? Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And now I just saw a whole lot of people hang up, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for that. That was a really in-depth introduction to some common threads that um, come up in the DevOps and ITSM conversation. And I hope for our audience listening that that sheds some light on some kind of areas of concern for you. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to you guys. Um, thank you so much for all the questions sent in so far. Um, if you haven't yet and there's something you'd really love to ask Daniel, please send it in on the questions box. So first of all, this one's come in, um, and this is related in particular to staffing. What do you think, Daniel, is the biggest challenge for an IT leader over an organization's ITSM practice with relation to staffing? Let me know if you want me to repeat the question. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. Um, okay, great. I think the, the, the biggest challenge for, well, the, the biggest challenge is twofold. First, the IT leader needs to think about what is their role now in a DevOps organization? Because you can't tell people to go do DevOps. You shouldn't have told people to go do ITSM. You have to be DevOps. You have to be able to create a common language and a common set of metrics. And, and, and you need to be able to you know, look at who's doing what when and help them understand why they're doing that. So, so the first challenge is for the IT leader themselves and, and, and your minus ones, if you will. Okay, the next thing then is, now that you've looked at that, what are the skills that you need and how do you keep those skills relevant and current to meet the challenges of your organization? If you're looking at all the different data rules and requirements that are now coming into force in 2018, 2019, like GDPR, and you don't have a whole lot of good people that are data oriented, then that's a challenge for you. You need to be able to go and get those skills. If, if you're looking at digital transformation and you want to do fast web work, then you need to go find those digital transformation fast web work people. And, and that's the switch between IT service management people and, and, and DevOps people. At the same time, you know, you need to be able to find service management individuals that can help you do better, faster, safer. So how do you get agile service management processes? How do you create flexibility of change without you know, making it so rigid that nothing ever gets done? Because you have to go through all these different approval forms before anything can get done. So your service management team mentality uh, needs to change and maybe some of the tools associated with it. So I think that's the challenges for IT, service, uh, IT leaders. Okay, thank you. And um, before I move on to the next question, actually, someone has asked you to repeat the name of the author that you recommended. Mark Schwartz. Mark Schwartz. Okay, perfect. S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z. He's okay. written two books, uh, Read the Art of Business Value, and then if you're real brave, read the next book. Okay, thank you. Um, someone has asked about outsourcing, and what do you think about outsourcing in the context of DevOps? and the particular challenges associated with this? I don't think, well, outsourcing has a whole lot of challenges and outsourcing has always had a whole lot of challenges. The question is, is can you keep account accountability of what it is that you've outsourced or you've asked a vendor to help you with? IT service management always suggested or all the good practices always suggested that the vendor becomes part of your team. They become a trusted part of your team. 
They help you create the end-to-end -end processes. It's not an adjunct. They're part of whatever it is that you're trying to do. And DevOps further encourages that collaboration and communication to be able to deliver that software or manage that software or manage the hardware that that software runs on. So DevOps doesn't change the, the spectrum and, and, you know, and, and practices like service integration and management, SIAM, and DevOps are a perfect match because now you're getting you know, people together that want to look at the way that services are being introduced across an, you know, an entire suite of people and how do you integrate that into the organization such that the organization retains accountability but everybody knows what their responsibility is for that particular service. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, someone has asked about, with regards to the fast-changing retail market, um, we need to keep up the time to market and that the, um, the way we do this is to automate the process. With relation to DevOps, they've asked if this is correct. So DevOps and retail and automating the process, is this the right way to go about it? So I heard a story that a CTO for one of the organizations that, you know, do a lot of business to business or internet to user um, practices, I'm not going to mention their name. Uh, and, and basically he was going, look, if you take the books of ITIL, it, it's, very, it's very clear that it's DevOps. DevOps is about getting the right flow in place, getting the right feedback in place, and then learning from what happens and improving that. So those are the three main aspects of DevOps. If you apply that now to ITIL, you have a strategy of stuff that you want to do. You design against that strategy. You transition that strategy into live, and you operate that strategy, and you improve that strategy. This organization does that every nine seconds. They change something on their website on average every nine seconds, and they think that's too slow. The question that I always ask organizations when they go, so how fast do we need to be or how much do we auto uh, automate is, it depends. If you wanted to introduce stuff to your customers that is of value to them, then you want to do that as quickly as possible, but you also want to make sure that it works when the customer makes that request and that you're ready to fulfill it. So yes, automate your processes as much as possible, but you know, the caveat is the moment that the customer asks for something or asks for support to something, you need to be able to uh, give it to them. And so it's, you know, it's a two-fold approach, and DevOps encourages that two-fold approach in working with your customers. Okay. Um, thank you. Andy, someone's just um, written in to say they're reading the second Mark Schwartz book now, and they're nearly finished, and it definitely does challenge the need for an IT organization in their <laughs> commerce there. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. So anyone listening who thinks they might want to read it, I think you should go for it. Um, okay, on to the next question. Um, also, um, guys out there listening, I've had so many questions come in, which is great, and I promise I'll get round to them all, so um, bear with me. <laughs> we will get through them. Um, this is, we kind of touched on this a bit earlier, but if you could talk a bit more about what kind of organization, um, organizational cultural change is required to transition the IT team to become more DevOps-driven. Everything is every, – being an American now living in England, the very first thing I realized is, is we're two cultures separated by a common language. But you know as well as I do because you lived in Canada that there are some terms that, that don't mean necessarily the same things yeah. in the United States or Canada as they do here in, in the U.K., right? Yeah. Okay, so think about – Think about the way that you use words in an organization. When I say change and they say change, or release, or deploy, or service, or incident, or problem, what does that really mean? Okay, so the culture of an organization yeah. is the way that they communicate. The culture of the organization is the way they behave. So how do you want an organization to behave because they now use technology better? 
I mean, that is the question that is being asked by DevOps. You have a whole bunch of technology now. You have technology that is nowhere near sophisticated as when I started my IT. I mean, it's far more sophisticated than when I started my IT career. How are you going to take advantage of that? And how are you going to keep yourself flexible enough to continue to take advantage of that, you know, over the next years of your organization? That, that is the opportunity and the challenge of an organization, and that is where the culture needs to change. You, you can start simple. Stop doing red, amber, green reports. Go to real-time dashboards to where people know what's happening and respond to those things on a daily basis. Let people feel they have ownership because of the value that they've created by introducing a product or by fixing a set of incidents for an organization. You know, all, all these types of things engender the change in culture that DevOps is trying to encourage. You know, sharing is a big part of, of DevOps. Sharing and knowledge is a big part of DevOps. So having the service desk involved at the very beginning of a requirements lifecycle is a massive cultural change. But then think about it from the service desk and customer's point of view. They now are helping users and customers better than they ever did before because they helped to create the fix or at least the words that they were going to use for that particular customer as part of the release lifecycle. So it's all kinds of stuff that you can do in that uh, cultural change thing. Okay. Play with it. Okay. Um, someone has asked, you know, you just gave the book recommendation from uh, Mark Schwartz. Um, someone has asked if there's any books, forums, or authors that you recommend that cover um, an agile service management approach. Uh, go to the DevOps Institute and read all the stuff that DevOps.com has on Agile ITSM. Okay, perfect. Hopefully that or find or find or find my blogs. Okay. Yes, Google Daniel Breston. Yeah, Google help. Daniel Breston and read my stuff. Okay. Um, okay, this is quite a lengthy question, so just bear with me while I um, try to get my head around this one. So someone has said DevOps is about continuous integration and continuous deployment. Um, so with this in mind, how can an IT organization that leverages ITIL change their processes to get into a DevOps model? Okay, don't, don't, don't close that question down so I can continue to read it as I, yeah. as I <laughs> respond. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so DevOps has certain practices. And the first practice that they mentioned here is continuous integration. So if you think about a bunch of developers, they come in at the beginning of the day, they've gotten some requirements, and they start coding against that. In a DevOps environment, you want them to be coding in an environment that is as close to production-like as possible. That way, when they go home at the end of the day and they run their test suite and their tests come back and go, yeah, this was pretty good, actually, they know that it was pretty good because the production-like environment that they coded against shows them that what they're doing would work in a live environment. As they start to work with other people and integrate that code, and the tests now continue to show them that it's good, now you have continuous integration, whatever continuous means in your organization. As you start to get to the point to where now you want to go live with this stuff, so continuous deployment, you have to make sure that the right set of tests and the right documentation and the right version control and the right um, IT type of tests like performance, monitoring, alerting, all the other things that are going to make this thing work, work, have also been done. So that's that interchange between the DevOps continuous integration and continuous deployment software practices and the ITIL if you want to, technology practices and how they work together to mitigate risk. And at least if you have a risk, you can discuss it. You, you can get the right people together, the team, the product owner, the senior stakeholder, 
together and go, this is where we're at. What do you want to do now? Do you want to just release a part of this? Remember that we're not doing big project, 11-month life cycles here. This is, you know, in continuous in integration and continuous deployment, you're doing continuous integration and continuous deployment. You could be deploying stuff every other day. You could be deploying stuff Monday through Friday. Okay? So with that type of culture in your mindset, how do you mitigate risk against that speed of delivery to your customers or internal staff and their use of technology? That means you're doing small changes. You're not doing big changes anymore. And that's the way you mitigate risk. Okay. Um, staying on continuous delivery and continuous integration, what do you think, if there are any, are, like, are there any similarities between continuous delivery and continuous integration and DevOps? So continuous integration is the life cycle of getting the, the of getting ready to introduce something. Continuous deployment says I could go live, but maybe I need to wait for an external auditor's review, or maybe I need to wait for a vendor to tell me that they're ready. Yeah. And, okay. <clears throat> continuous deployment is I don't need any of that. I've created something, I've passed the test, it's live. Okay. Okay. Now, live doesn't necessarily mean it's in use. Live just means it's ready for someone to use. So you could have it, you know, kind of sitting there, but you haven't necessarily given access to it. So that could be also a step that that you could put into your continuous integration, delivery, and deployment life cycle. Okay, thank you. Um, someone has asked how specifically with regards to enterprise architecture and solution architecture, how do these two things factor into the DevOps and ITSM approach? Well, <clears throat> I guess it goes back to language again. So enterprise architecture and solution architecture, from my point of view, are the individuals responsible for trying to create the processes and mentality around the stuff that an organization is going to use that's technology related. So it could be, we're only going to use this cloud type. We're only going to use this particular set of tools for now. Okay, the DevOps says that's fine. We don't mind you introducing consistency. What we would prefer you did, enterprise solution architects, is create solutions that are still flexible. So if we need to change tomorrow, because for argument's sake, here in the UK, Lord only knows what's going to happen because of Brexit and what the impact is going to be on organizations and how they have to manage data or have, how, how they have to deliver, uh, you know, things to customers. You don't want to have an architecture that is so locked down that you can't respond to that because your competitors will kill you. So the solution architects and enterprise architects are the individuals that you can look at to introduce those flexible DevOps processes to keep you competitive, but also to keep you compliant. Okay, fantastic. Um, next question is with regards to managed service providers. Um, one of our listeners has asked, what recommendations or advice do you have for managed service providers um, to help their clients achieve maturity levels in DevOps and ITSM? Oh, what a great question. Um, I talk to a lot of people that are managed service providers. And our biggest advice to them is be brave enough to go and say, what would happen if? What would happen if we went down? What would happen if we had a data-related issue? What would happen if we wanted to change our software or up, update it or do a new release. 
How would that impact you? And the other question is, is how can we help you? What is your organization vision? And then what is your technology mission against that? And where do we fit in? So can you treat us like an employee, please? So be brave, brave enough to be treated as an employee along the life cycle of technology. And then now that MSP is becoming a trusted advisor and trusted partner, instead of just a contractual pain in the neck. And, and that's what MSPs have to do down the DevOps uh, world, in my opinion. Okay. Um, someone has said the interactions between ITSM, DevOps, Lean, and Agile, how do you align these interactions to um, work with business objectives? How do you tidy these interactions between all these different technology frameworks? So first of all, ITSM, DevOps, Lean, Agile, let's agree that they're marketing terms. The question that, that's really being asked is, how do you align the use of technology with your organization? And the answer back from all of these different frameworks is, what is the value of that of technology to a particular way of working. So let's take recruitment of personnel and making sure that they can work the day that they start working, what some people call onboarding. In many organizations that we go into, the onboarding process is a lengthy process. And basically some in some organizations, you're, you're not able to work the first three, four, five days. I've seen as bad as 11 days. In which case then, if you use technology in a more intelligent way, you get them working the day that they start working. So I think you have to go back and say, you know, what are the business objectives? What are the business value streams? Where do we make our money? What, which part of our organizations use technology, which nowadays is every part, and, and then look at those different ways of working and make sure that you're using technology in a smart fashion. And, and, and when you do that, you're going to take advantage of all the you know, main frameworks or methodologies uh, currently in place. Okay, thank you for that. Um, someone has said, in your view, um, who do you think the top software industry leaders are that are leading this DevOps technology today? That's like asking who, who, who are the top car manufacturers. <laughs> um, that, that's too difficult of a question, actually. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to answer that. The, the question is, is you know, where, where, where in the life cycle of DevOps are, are, you, are you talking about chat? Are you talking about, you know, requirements gathering? Are you, you, there, there's some very good slides out. If you go to Zebia, X-E-B-I-A, they have a free download that looks like a, a chemical element chart. And on that chart, they've changed it such that you can sh see the different parts of a software life cycle or software delivery life cycle or IT and technology or IT service management life cycle. And they plot against that a whole suite of tools. And they try to keep that updated, but I mean, it changes so fast. But, but if you want to know who are the main tools, uh, vendors, Gartner, Forster, the Zebia website is going to be far more than what I can give you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think this is an interesting question that's come in. Um, this uh, listener has said that in their point of view, DevOps delivers the products with its framework and methodology, and then ITSM serves as the after support. Um, do you think this is correct, or are you advocating that you should wrap DevOps into ITSM? Okay, so let's put aside DevOps for a second. Let's just talk about IT service management. Okay. So IT service management has, it, it's usually when people say IT service management, they're talking about ITIL or they're talking about COVID. In which case then the main books are, I have a strategy, 
I want business case, I want people, I want financial objectives, I want a reason to be able to do something, and I want to understand how technology can help me. I want to design against that. And so there's a bunch of practices around designing against that. I want to make sure that what I'm designing is actually going to be safe for me to do. So there's testing and there's change approval. And now that it's live, I want to be able to support it, but more importantly, I want to be able to improve it. DevOps says, let's put that life cycle on steroids. And instead of doing this in big nine month, 12 month, five year program of change, why can't we do something every week, every day, every hour? Why do we have to wait to get value from a, a requirement until it's quote unquote perfect? Why can't we get a little piece now and another little piece and another little piece until it's fully built? But every little piece provides value, provides change to the organization to the, and to the customers. So I wrap them together. Okay, thank you. Uh, hopefully that answered your question, whoever asked that. Um, if, you go to the, if you go to IT Revolution, which is basically the Gene Kim uh, website, they've got a lot of free resources there and they have some DevOps and IT service management and enterprise architecture white papers that are, that are uh, free uh, to download. And, and if you read those, it'll, it'll also uh, challenge your perceptions about DevOps and service management. Okay, thank you. Um, this is an interesting one that touches on IT security. Um, someone Ooh. has said, adopting DevOps, surely this puts more pressure on IT security due to the speed of deployment. Um, how do we best manage this? Make security part of your DevOps life cycle. Okay. Why would you why would you release something out that wasn't secure? I mean nowadays that should be paramount. So DevSecOps, rugged rugged DevOps, uh, you know, open source security scanning that's constantly occurring in the background. I mean all those things now are available, and 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 should be part of whatever it is that you, that you're doing uh, in your technology environment. Okay. I think we might we should do a session on DevSecOps on Bright Talks because that's definitely coming up a lot. And um, what about business side? Someone has said, can these DevOps practices that you've touched on, can they be effectively implemented and utilized in smaller organizations as well as the bigger ones? And um, basically, can ITSM still benefit from applying this me methodology in this smaller environment? So before I joined Virtual Clarity, for a period of time, I was a single consultant and I was benefiting from IT service management and DevOps practices. I mean, think about it. If you're a single consultant, if you're a small organization, you're, challenged, you're being challenged by the larger boys that are out there doing stuff for clients. And what you need to do is you need to do better stuff and you need to do it faster and you need to do it cheaper and you need to be able to improve upon it to keep yourself competitive and in business. Isn't that what DevOps is all about? Better, faster, safer delivery of software in a way that customers can take advantage of it from you before they go and take advantage of it from somewhere else. So I think small organizations can benefit from the practices of agile IT service management DevOps as well as any of the big organizations. The bigger organizations are going to have the problem of trying to figure out how to scale it across their uh, entire organization, which a smaller one may not necessarily have as an issue. Okay. Um, how about Agile? Someone has asked, does a DevOps team definitely have to use the Agile methodology to operate effectively? What's your thoughts on that? I, I think you can't be DevOps unless you're doing small pieces of work. And I think that you can't be DevOps unless you visualize that work and see the value of that work and be able to improve upon that work. Now, whether that means you're doing peer-to-peer -peer development 
and release of that work or you're doing every two weeks you're going to go and do something scrum or you're doing how would we test this before we go and design against it or how do we change the behavior of technology and how it's being used so you know the agile methodologies or agile practices imply that you're going to, you know, I, I prefer collaboration and communication over big, heavy processes. I prefer being able to talk to somebody about what I'm getting ready to do rather than rely on a big Visio diagram. I, you know, I prefer to do stuff in small chunks so that people can start getting value from it rather than big, long programs of change. And, and that's, that's why, just like DevOps merges with IT service management, DevOps merges with Agile and all the 30 different practices that are, you know, under the Agile umbrella. Okay. Um, this question kind of goes back to the size of business and business maturity that we touched on just briefly a second ago. Someone has said, can an organization who has still not matured itself to concepts of ITIL and ITSM enough, do you think they can move into or adopt DevOps well, despite this lack of maturity? Yes. Right. Because what you're going to do is you're going to go, how do, we, how do we fix things today? So you're going to do a value stream mapping exercise. So if you read the DevOps handbook, you, it has a big chunk about, you know, in, IT service management and DevOps practices and doing a value stream mapping exercise of how do we fix things today? What is our lead time? What is our quality? across that whole life cycle and then what are the experiments or things that we have to do to improve that without killing ourselves okay um i'm unfortunately we've only got a couple of minutes left in this um i've had so many questions and i'm sorry I can't, we can't get around to answering them all but we do have another ask the expert um session coming up in itsm and devops um a little more bit down the line in a couple of months and um, so if we haven't answered your questions just yet hopefully we can get Daniel on again to do it and um, can, can you send me these questions and I'll write yes, a blog that we can put out yes that's perfect to start to answer some of them perfect and um, thank you so much everyone for listening in and for all your questions um, it was fantastic and please don't forget to leave feedback for us and rate the session and also if you're interested in the rest of the RC expert series um, in signing up under the attachments thank you very much everybody Thank you, Harriet. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Bye, everyone.